you know, deep cranking largemouth is a is a tool that I have in my arsenal. Everyone on tour has in their arsenal, and if you haven't got into it yet, it's a really addictive way to catch fish. There's nothing like cranking along the bottom, feeling that rock, feeling that rock, and when one stops it, I mean, that is just so much fun. You know, largemouth bass, when they get offshore all through the post-spawn, into the summer, early fall, they stay real tight to this, this underwater structure, whether it be a ledge, um, an isolated rock pile, underwater point, whatever it is, they stay on those spots. So it's real important to use electronics whenever you're trying to locate um, largemouth bass and, uh, and deep crank them. I always like fishing directly down current, downwind, or directly up current, upwind, because that helps me pinpoint that rock pile better with that deep diving crankbait. And I know largemouth, whether I'm up north, you know, down south, Tennessee River, wherever I have that, that grass to rock transition, those are always, always, always good cranking spots, you know, real high percentage cranking areas. So looking at my side vision here, I know there's a nice rock point that strings all the way out to the middle of the lake. So I'm positioned directly upwind. I'm gonna go ahead and spot lock it, grab that deep six, make a real long cast all the way down across that point, grind it down there. And I always like starting off fast, real fast. So I want the biggest, most aggressive fish, whether I'm largemouth fishing or smallmouth fishing, grind it quick and get the biggest, most aggressive fish out of that school. There's one. Right off that rock. Again, deep cranking like this, you know, it's very important to use your electronics and find that sweet spot. You can almost call your shots. You see it on the graph, you know exactly where it is. And if you set up straight up wind and keep making that cast until you hit that sweet spot, especially this time of year, you could just load the boat with this deep six. Come on up here. Yeah. Yeah, they got it good there. That's the Biwako clear gill color. It's just a really good color and clear water. We've got maybe seven foot visibility, six, seven foot visibility here. There's a nice green tint to the water. And whenever there's a green tint, I always like throwing those green hues, especially cause I know they're eating bluegill. He ate that one good. I'm gonna get the pliers there. That's a good one on the deep six. There you go, girl. The fun one. I know you got friends down there. So I know with my lineup, I know my heading, I can see where my heading's at. I got a spot lock down here and I know straight down wind is the cast I need to make. Really cool thing about this crankbait, it dives down 16 to 20 feet on a 12 pound test fluorocarbon line. I'm using a seven foot five uh, destroyer rod. Megabass is the originator of the weight transfer system. There's a heavy ball on the inside of this bait here that when it falls back into the tail end of this bait, it allows me to cast straight into the wind just like a dart. A really cool thing about a deep six as well is that front bill is so thin, it chops through the water real nice. So it's got a lot of that real lateral movement. Uh, the bait's not restricted by the bill. It's just a straight downward side to side motion. And with this rod and 12 pound line, I could feel every left to right motion that that crankbait has. As far as the retrieve goes for, for the deep six, deep dive and crankbait, um, I'll start out with a medium to, to medium fast retrieve. Again, this crankbait I think shines the most in, in clearer waters. Um, I grew up fishing out west, all through you know the desert lakes. Um, and some of the lakes down in Tennessee or up north, anywhere there's visibility of four feet or better, it seems like the deep six is really, really shines. The sound it makes, it's got a nice solid knock, plus the color, the realistic finish. It's an awesome, awesome clear water deep diving crankbait. The biggest difference between largemouth fishing with it and smallmouth fishing with the deep six, both of them like it. The green ones like it, the brown ones like it, but um, seems like more so um, when I get on a really good deep six bite with largemouth, you know, you gotta keep it down there, grind it in those rocks, deflect it off those rocks. Those largemouth love it when it redirects off those deeper rocks out there in 15 to 20 feet. But smallmouth, smallmouth seem a little different. A lot of times when I'm on an awesome deep six bite for smallmouth bass, I'm usually in 22 to 25 feet of water, 12 pound test line, real long cast and I'm actually catching suspended fish in 17 to 20 feet. So I'm really never making contact with the bottom uh, when I'm smallmouth fishing with the deep six. A lot of times they're seeing it just above their head and uh, they react on it, so. Nice bomber cast. <laughs> 
grinding along. There's some rock, there's some grass. Yank it out of there, get it wobbling again. Look at that rod tip's just knocking left, right. Dun, 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 dun. Um, it gets caught up on a rock or a piece of grass, I'll just kind of pull it off. A lot of times the bites will occur right then and there. 